Hey Luma, let me show you how to make the stocking sock for your average two to four year old. For a list of supplies and more information, be sure to visit the website. And let's begin the cast on with a 24 peg loom and one strand of chunky yarn. I'm doing a simple knot. You can do a slip knot and it doesn't matter whether you go left or right. We're gonna wrap all of our pegs. I'm using the E-Wrap cast on, but feel free to use whatever cast on works well for you. Now, we're gonna go ahead and use the U-Wrap version of the knit stitch to knit one row. To do the U-Wrap, take the yarn and half wrap your peg and knit off. Again, take the working yarn and half wrap your peg and you knit off. Continue, you need to knit all 24 pegs. When you're done knitting your last peg, which is peg 24 you are now done with the cast on and you're ready to move on to row one where you will do a purl three knit three six stitch pattern i did mark my loom for the six stitch pattern which is those three purls and then the three knit stitches to do your purl, you're gonna take your working yarn and place it under the existing loop. Take your hook from the top and scoop up to create a new loop. You're then gonna take the old loop off the peg and put the new loop on and pull the working yarn. You're gonna do that again. That was purl one. Scoop up, create a new loop. Take the old loop off the peg, put the new one on and pull the string. That is your purl number two. And again, you're gonna scoop up, create a new loop, take the old loop off, put the new loop on, and that is purl number three. For the knit stitches, we're gonna be using the U-wrap. So half wrap your peg and knit off, and that is your knit one. Again, half wrap, knit off for your knit two. And here's the last knit. So knit off and that's three knits. So you did three purls and three knit stitches for that six stitch repeat, which you will do again. You're gonna do three purls and three knit stitches. And you're gonna do these six stitches again until you've done all 24 pegs. So you're repeating these six stitches four times, right? So that you can finish row one and then be ready for the next row. So continue with your six stitch repeat until you're done with the row. Once you finish the last set of six stitches, you're ready then for row two, which is super easy. You're just going to knit the row. Once you're done knitting that row, you're ready to go on to rows three through 20. And for that, you're gonna repeat rows one and two nine more times. And don't forget to take the knot off the anchor peg so that your knitting won't get ruined. And once you've done those rows, you're ready to go to row 21 through 25 where we're gonna change the color for the belt 
and then knit five rows. So we're gonna leave a long tail about five inches of the first color. So go ahead and cut and again leave that long tail. And then we're gonna get two strands of worsted weight yarn. I'm using the color black for my belt. And we're gonna make a knot. So take the first color and wrap it around the second color uh, in order to make that knot. Now you can change color however you want to do it, whatever works for you. This is the way I change color and even I sometimes do it different. Sometimes I'll just make a slip knot and put it on the first peg um, and then try to get the color as close to that peg as possible. And then in order to keep the color from showing too much, we're gonna do a bit of a technique. But first let's start by, um, if you want to, I do make a second knot to just secure it. And again, like I said, you could just make a slip knot and put it on the first peg if that's what you wanna do. So get the old color and bring it in front of the new color before you knit off that first peg. That's going to help you to hide um, a little error that sometimes shows up. It's called a jog. So you see that that first white color is in front of the new color before I knit that first peg. Knit off and now you're going to start your rows. So remember that we're still using the U-Wrap version of the Knit Stitch and you're just going to need to knit these five rows. Here is row one where you changed color and before you knit off peg one, you put the old color over the new color. Now you finished row one and only on row two are you going to do this. You're gonna go ahead again and you're going to place the old color in front of the new color and you're gonna skip that peg, peg one you're not going to knit peg one. So you put the old color over the new color, skip peg one, and you go to peg two, and you're going to knit off, skipping peg one, you're knitting peg two, and you're only going to do this on row two. Okay, so remember you have five rows to do but the technique of keeping your colors from looking lopsided, right? You want that stripe to look nice and clear. On row two, you're skipping peg one. And then you're gonna continue to knit these, the rest of these rows, just like you normally do. You're knitting 24 pegs, right? You only made this change where you skip peg one on row two and then no more. Then just keep knitting the rest of your rows because you need five rows in total. So here I am on peg 24, right, of row two and for row three, I come over to peg one and I knit peg one and this is row three. I'm just gonna knit row three and I'm gonna knit row four and I'm gonna knit all of the pegs on row five. Once you're done knitting those five rows, now you're ready for rows 26 through 35 where you're just gonna knit the row, but first we need to change color again. So you finish knitting the belt and now you're going to leave a long tail just like before, which is about five inches of that black color for the belt. And I'm gonna bring in red. And just like before, I'm knitting with two colors. I'm sorry, I'm knitting with two strands of yarn and so I'm going to create a knot. Again, you can use your favorite method of uh, bringing in a new color. And just like before, we're gonna bring the old color over the new one and then knit peg one. Remember that you only do that on this first row of the color change because you wanna avoid what's called a jog, right? Where your stripe is uneven. And once you finish that first row, remember that now for your second row, again, you're gonna bring the old color over the new one, but this time you're skipping peg one. And you're only doing this on the second row of the color change. 
because you're needing 10 rows of this red color to finish the ankle and start the heel. To knit the heel, we're only going to use 12 of the 24 pegs and we're going to use the German short rows method. So I've marked my loom four at the beginning, none in the middle, four at the end. You can use this method if you like or not mark them. It's up to you. Um, we're going to start on peg one and knit all the way to 12. Go back short row, go back short row on 11, go back short row on two, on 10, on three, on nine, and so on. So let's start by knitting from peg one to peg 12 and then I'm going to show you how to do that short row. Now I learned this by watching a video by Smitten Kitten where she does socks um, using this method. She does it on a small gauge loom and it's a little different so I need you to pay attention even if you know how to do short rows because on the large gauge loom it is a bit different. As you see we're using the U-Rep method and here we are on peg 12 and I'm going to knit off and then I need to bring my working yarn and loosen this little knot right there so that I can take that yarn and bring it to the front and bring this little split right here that happens when you knit bring it as close to the front of that peg as possible and then start knitting back but see how it needs help when you use the large gauge loom it doesn't move forward without a little help from your hook. So I'm knitting back. I did that short row that was on peg 12 and now we need to get back to peg one so that I can short row peg one. And so I'm back here again, or at this point decreasing. And so I bring that little knot over so that I can see the split. See right there? I can see it at the front of that peg one and then I take my working yarn and I start knitting back. I just did a short row on peg 1 and 12. Now I'm knitting my way back um, to peg 11 where I'm going to do the next short row. So I keep knitting all of my pegs and here on peg 11 I'm going to do the same thing I did on 12. I'm going to loosen this little knot right here on the side of the peg and then bring the working yarn as close to the front as I can. Don't worry if you can't bring the little split all the way to the front. You're just going to do the best that you can. The more you bring it to the front, the better your heel will look. Okay? But you don't want to bring it you don't want to pull it so much that then you can't knit off when you head back. All right? So now the next peg that needs a short row is going to be peg two right here. See? I'm going to knit off and just like one I need to do on two, I need to pull that little knot to kind of get the yarn kind of loose because I want to see that split as close to the front as I possibly can. And you can see where the short rows were done, right? You could see right here on one and two and on 12 and 11. And what you just did, you'd need to do again with the other end where I have placed my stitch markers, right? So I did 12 and 11 and now I need to short row peg 10. And so again, I knit off, loosen the little knot, bring my working yarn as close to the front as I can. I want that split at the front and I knit off nine. And you see that I have three short rows on my uh, right. And so now I need to go back to the left side where I'm going to now short row peg three. Because I'm going to short row four pegs on my left side and four pegs on my right side. And there's four in the middle that are not going to be done. I'm not going to put short rows on them. See, I'm up to three in the front. I'm heading back now to peg number nine, which will be the last peg that I will do a short row 
on my right side see that's the fourth peg with a short row on my right side so I'm gonna knit my way back to peg four and then that will be my last peg that I do on my left side you see that I have four yellow markers that helps me to see it and it helps me to show you that I'm on the left side and I'm doing that last short row and again you can clearly see the pegs that have a short row when you bend the loom see I can see where my short rows are on that side all right now I finished decreasing and now it's time to do the increase but first let me show you four short rows on my right and none on in the middle and four on the left side and that was the decrease and now we're going to increase so the bad news is that I lost my clips for the increases but the good news is that I did the same technique for another video so you're going to see me do the same technique just in a different color let's get started so I'm showing you here that just like uh, in my red sock in my white one I have done the short rows so now I'm going to knit off peg nine okay and then I'm going to do the one next to it which is peg 10 so I knit off those um, loops one at a time one two and now I'm going to short row peg 10 so just like before I loosen that little knot and then I take the working yarn and I try to bring that split as close to the front as I possibly can and I'm going to knit off peg 9. I short rowed peg 10 and now I'm going to knit my way back to peg 4 because I did my de decreases now I'm going to increase my fabric so I'm going to knit off peg 4 right here doing the same thing I did with 9 I'm knitting my loops one at a time and I'm going to do the one next to it the peg next to it so I knit off those two loops and now I'm going to short row peg 3 because I need to go back in the opposite direction because I need to knit off peg 10 so I hope you guys can see the pattern you can see what I'm doing so now 4 and 9 have don't have short rows anymore I knit those off and so now I'm heading back to the right side of the loom and the next peg that I want to knit off is 10 so I'm going to knit off up to peg 10 right so I take my working yarn there and I'm going to knit off the two loops that are sitting on 10 so here's that first loop the second one and now I'm going to knit the peg next to it which is peg 11 so I knit off that short row that I had on peg 11 and now I put a new one on it so I loosen that knot bring the working yarn forward and I'm going to knit my way back to the left side of the loom where I have more short rows because this time on my way back when I get to the left side I want to knit off the short row and this happens sometimes don't worry about it um, I'm gonna knit off the short row that is on peg three so I'm knitting my way back over there and see there's no short row on four so I want to knit off the short row that's on three I knit off those two loops and then I'm going to knit the peg next to it so it has two loops from my short row that I'm going to knit off and it's a little tight but I get it done and now I'm going to short row peg two so I loosen that knot and bring my working yarn over as well as I can because I need to knit back to the right side of the loom right because I need to knit off peg 11 
I've done nine, I've done 10, and now I need to knit off the short row that I have on peg 11. And so I'm knitting my way back, I, that's nine, here's peg 10, and now I need to take the short row off of peg 11, so I knit off those two loops, and then I do the peg next to it, which is peg 12. So I knit those off and now I short row peg 12. And so I loosen the little knot like I'm supposed to and bring it, uh, bring my working yarn as close as I can. And then I start knitting my way back to the left side of my loom because my goal now is to knit off peg one. And then I will not have any more short rows um, on that side. I'm sorry, I need to knit off peg two. Got ahead of myself, I'm so sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to knit the short row off of peg two and the peg next to it, which is peg one. I knit that off and now I short row that peg. This is the last peg I'm gonna short row on this side and I'm gonna make my way back and finish the row. So I short row peg one. And now what I'm gonna do after I get this as close to the front as I can, because this one is tricky, you wanna do this as well as you can. Otherwise you're gonna have a very loose loop there and it could create a, a little hole. And so I try to get it as close to the front as I possibly can. And then I'm going to knit all around so I'm going to knit all of these 23 pegs that are left which is going to take me um, this one row is going to take me back to peg 24 so you see that I'm going to knit all of my pegs and I'm not going to short row on this side so when I knit off that peg that peg 12 I can take it and remount the middle if I wanted to so I knit off these two and I could bring this up and remount it to the next peg and reinforce but I'm not going to I'm just going to knit off and pull my loop real nice and tight and not worry I'm not going to have a little hole and now that was the last of the short rows on my right side and I'm just going to knit my way knit my way back over to peg 24 and that row is done but I still have a short row on peg one that was left over I don't have to worry I'm going to now knit another row and knit off on that next row I'm gonna knit off that short row that is on peg one and now I'm ready to knit my heel so I'm gonna knit all the way back to peg 24 and as you can see there are no little holes here it looks really good see that great heel and now we're ready for our next part next you're going to knit the foot of the sock in the round this is a custom fit and once you measure from the heel to the ball of the foot you're going to knit approximately 5.25 rows per inch in my case I started my count over because it's customized and I'm doing tw 20 rows. All you're gonna do is knit the row. You guys already know how to knit 20 rows in the round, so I'm not gonna go over that again. Instead, let me take you to the next part, which is to knit the toe, again, using the German short rows. We're doing exactly the same procedure that was done for the heel it's even on the same side so as you can see i'm using the 12 pegs and i'm just going to short row four on the right and four on the left yay it's almost done now we're just going to close the toe so you're going to take your working yarn and wrap it around the loom about two and a half times Two times might be okay, but just to make sure I put in that little little bit extra. Cut the yarn and then thread a needle with that working yarn. 
And now we're going to start with peg 24 and from the bottom we're going to feed the needle upward and feed it completely through and now take the loop off the peg. And you could do it with your needle or with your fingers or even with the hook, doesn't matter. Now you go to peg one and we're gonna do the same thing, feed the needle through the bottom up and take the loop off the peg. Now we go back to the other side and do the same thing, feed the needle upward and that is peg 23. You're gonna take the loop off the peg and now you're gonna to go to peg two. So you're going side to side. You basically divided the loom in half and you go from one side here on the right to the other side on the left and do the same thing. You're just gonna to continue to go from right to left. You feed the thread and needle from the bottom up and remove the loop. And every now and then it's probably a good idea to tighten those loops up a little. It's gonna make it easier for you at the end of this process to tug on your drawstring and close that toe section. So once you've done all of them, um, you've removed all of your loops. Here we're down to just two of them and down to one. This one needed to be knit off, which I forgot to do, so I'm doing it now. I'm knitting off the short row and now I'm taking my uh, needle through it. And there you go. Now it's completely off the loom. You're just gonna pull on these really, really loose um, strands and try to make this nice and tidy, nice and clean. So the better you close it, the better it's going to look. And there you have it, you've closed it. Now you just wanna secure what you've done. So we're gonna start off by pulling all of those stitches so that they're nice and looking good. And then I turn this inside out. So I'm actually knitting this on the in, I'm sorry, I'm weaving in the ends from the inside. Um, and as you can see, that little corner needed to be closed up because it stays kind of open. So you wanna make sure that you close it nice um, and neatly and on the reverse side is gonna look better if you do that. And I cut the yarn. So you cut off all the excess yarn and put the uh, sock back um, with the um, outside uh, of the fabric, uh, right side out. And now you see that it looks really good. I'm going to steam block it. And now, before I do that actually, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten my cast on. I used the E-Wrap cast on, you might have used something else. And I will put a link in the description that shows you uh, in detail how to do this process. I'm basically just pulling on my very, very loose loops in order to tighten them up. I start on the opposite side of the drawstring and then just keep pulling them and you see it just finishes and at the end I make a knot and there you have it. My cast on is tight and like I said I'll give you a link to, to a video that's going to better describe it. Now it's time to put the buckle on the be belt section. Uh, but first let's go ahead and weave in this end. I'm using a um, crochet hook you can use a needle doesn't matter uh, you just want to finish this up so again it look, looks nice and neat and weave in those ends I usually go downward and then I'll turn around and go in the opposite direction before I cut the excess yarn and I always leave just a little behind so I can weave that in and it's secure and there you have it you see that there's no jog in your um, change. And now I took two strands of floss in a gold color and I made sure that I even it out about four on each side and I used the floss to create the buckle. Now you can use a button in place of doing this and I do suggest that you put your hand in it to uh, keep from um, sewing the two sides together, right? 
You could do just one time or in my case, I kind of like to go through it twice because I like uh, the lines to look nice and thick. So I am going to sew the buckle on twice just so that it can look nice and thick. You can also um, double or triple or quadruple the amount of strands that you use. So as you can see, I didn't uh, cut a long enough thread. So I'm kind of having a hard time right here in that I need to make a knot and I really can't uh, do it well because I didn't cut a long enough thread. So I'm just going to separate my threads and um, with a crochet hook, separate them really nicely and then make a knot. I would have done this a lot easier if I had left a long enough tail like I did here. So now on the opposite side, you have a bunch of strings. Make sure that you weave those in and when you're done that you use your scissors to cut all that excess thread because it's going to bother um, whoever is going to wear the sock. And there you have it. Your stocking sock is done. I hope you like it. <laughs>